desert wastes, touch them with water, and make them the food basket for a nation. Take rugged mountain slopes, add power, and dot them with mines of 58 valuable minerals. Take a cliff-scarred coastline, have its underground oil and natural gas, and by this industry make possible the fastest growing cities in the world. This is the story of California, and its natural resources written in minerals, water, petroleum, and power. Shoring the Blue Pacific for a thousand miles, from the Mexican border to the state of Oregon, California is surrounded by mountain ranges forming a great central valley. In this vast treasure house, great natural resources remain locked until this 20th century. In 1769, sun-scorched sand and desert beauty were nearly all the pioneering Spanish padres found. Beautiful but hopeless desolation. Yet these Franciscan padres built with almost nothing but faith, a chain of missions, a day's journey apart along the California coast, while the American Revolution raged in the east. And with the help of mission Indians, they tried to make the olive, grape, and orange of Spain grow in the thirsty soil. The fertility of the earth was being discovered. But for nearly a hundred years, the Spanish rancheros along the coast were contented with raising a few cattle and sheep and living pleasantly. From siesta to fiesta. by James Marshall in the tail race of Sutter's Mill. To the mother load country came one of the greatness of men in the history of our country. Population for California on the road to gold. Workers with every skill and strength to build a state. Consumers needing food, housing, and the manufactured goods of industry. A gold standard isn't a standard of living. Food must be grown or imported. Here in the great Central Valley was land and sun for year-round farming, but not enough rainfall. Imperial Valley, a waste of cactus, greasewood, and mesquite. Yet the prospectors had a say. Where the mesquite grows, you can make fence posts bloom if you bring water. To unlock the treasures of the soil and climate, farmers look to the mountains of the north, the Sierra Nevada, a huge watershed, a priceless natural resource from the snow-capped peaks. Melting snow running off each spring, full life for desert-dead earth. irrigation if the rushing water could be stored, controlled, and led hundreds of miles down to where it was needed. The 
Sacramento River, fed by the melting snows of the Siskiyou and Sierra Nevada mountains in the northern end of Central Valley, funneled off the precious water to the ocean. In the southern end, San Joaquin was a drain pipe for five mountain streams. But leaving a dry valley after the spring floods. Far to the south and east, the turbulent Colorado, the most fractious river of the west, gouged out great canyons, ravaging the lowlands with devastating floods, but carrying the richest promise of a desert harvest in its muddy flow. At the risk of more floods, rivers were tapped by early projects like the Centerville, Kingsburg, and Fresno canals. And the mountain water began to make magic with the fertile soil of California. Yet, this was just the beginning. California was still crippled by another deficiency, power. Power was needed to build great dams in the mountains. Power to dig more canals. Power to bring more water to more desert. Power to develop raw materials. On the mountains were great stands of timber, redwood and ponderosa pine, but there was no power for large-scale logging. There were mountains of limestone, but no power to process them into cement. In the mother load country, mines closed down. Costs for power and transportation made it economically impractical to work the deep shafts. Boom towns became ghost towns. There was no coal for the steam engines that were creating giant industries in other states. Water wheels powered a few northern California mills, but this was just a trickle to the great needs of California, a giant, helpless without a source of power. In the dawn of the 20th century, oozing out of the ground of the Golden State near Los Angeles, came a new kind of gold, black gold, oil. Here was power for machinery to build dams, dig canals, hew down forests, spread cities, power to mine and manufacture and develop every natural resource of California. Power for the fast developing internal combustion engine. Discovery after discovery of oil was made. From the lower coastal areas, on over the mountains and into the valley of the San Joaquin, great pools were tapped. From the crowded tangle of wells covering Signal Hill to the well-spaced derricks of Colinga Nose in Fresno County. From the tideland operation, pulling the oil by slant drilling from the ocean bottom in the harbor of Wilmington. To the Santa Barbara and Ventura County wells set out in the waters of the Blue Pacific. Came the yield make California one of the largest petroleum producers in the nation. Efficient production without waste. From the oil pools and the sleeping giant of Kettleman Hills and other fields, still more power, natural gas. Instead of being wasted, this gas is captured, forced back into the ground to repressure the oil pools or piped away for industrial or home uses. Natural gas, forced by big booster pumps to cities hundreds of miles away. Power through pipes for every growing metropolis. Here was California's solution to her lack of coal. A huge supply of low-cost fuel. Today, this state is one of the largest users of natural gas in the Union. Fuel for steam plants to generate more electricity for more manufacturing. Fire for the kilns and stills of industry. For cooking and heating homes, offices, factories, and for research laboratories. The treasure house was half opened by Aladdin's gas-burning lamp. But in some of the valleys, Land was going back to desert. The need was for more water, controlled water. Again, California looked to the mountains, and now 
with petroleum to power construction equipment began to build the engineering marvels of our time from minerals and metals produced within its own borders the huge multiple purpose dams shasta in the north end of central valley to hold back the sierra and siskiyou mountain water for flood control irrigation and the generation of hydroelectric energy a huge water conservation program looking far into the future more water and more power for the treasure house and below shasta keswick dam still more power from the waters released by shasta at the lower end of the great central valley bryant dam at the headwaters of the san joaquin river fourth largest storage dam in the world Bryant impounds the floodwaters of the San Joaquin for diversion into the great Madera and Bryant Kern canals. These canals, when finished, will help reclaim more than a million acres in five counties by supplying new irrigation water. The Bryant Kern canal will be 70 feet wide at the top and 15 feet deep. It will carry enough flow to drown a city block under 2,000 feet of water every 24 hours. Lined with concrete, it will be a young river, a man-made river, to add to the natural riches of our nation. Hoover Dam, highest in the world, controlling the turbulent Colorado, turning its water into hydroelectric power. Although not within the state itself, Hoover sends a lifeline of energy to Southern California cities 300 miles away spanning the mountains and the deserts. Power to flow through rivers of wires. Power desperately needed in the cities and on the farms. Power from water, man's most versatile and valuable mineral. Parker Dam, below Hoover, to divert the water released from the big dam into the Colorado aqueduct. More water for Los Angeles and the southern coastal cities pumped over mountains. Another man-made river sheathed in concrete and steel, forced uphill to reach the valleys and plains beyond. And more water for the arid deserts. Powered by hydroelectric energy, great desilting works remove the reddish-brown mud from the Colorado River and deliver a clean, sparkling flow to the long irrigation channels. The life-giving All-American Canal an arrow of blue cutting across the miles of trackless waste to hit the heart of dry white desert with an explosion of green, making California first in the nation in value of crops produced. Desert conquest. Year-round water for a 365-day growing season. 200 different crops, from garden vegetables to exotic tropical fruits water for the thirsty soil of America's food basket. Endless groves of oranges, grapefruit, lemons, billion dollar industry. Oranges the year round sometimes blossom with green and ripe fruit on the same tree at the same time. 115,000 carloads per year carrying California brand names to the markets of the world. An ocean of oranges processed by the power from the water which grew them out of desert earth. Vast vineyards, the largest in the Western world, supplying 93% of the nation's grapes from half a million acres of sandy soil. Valley vineyards dotting the state from north to south. Table grapes, jellies, delicious juices, jams, and other products from a vast industry producing quality products to delight the palate of the world. Grapes for raisins, dried under the ever-shining sun in Fresno, Central Valley, the world's raisin center. Seedless raisins for the mixing bowls of America. From Santa Clara Valley, cherries, apricots, prunes, pears, and peaches. California, today the dried fruit and canning center of the world. Here is the fruit bowl of a nation. Dates 
from the palm trees of Indio, and Arabia below sea level, in the Coachella Valley, one of the exotic tropical fruits that grow nowhere else in the United States, a California exclusive. And figs in the Fresno area of the San Joaquin Valley. Almonds. Avocados, or call them alligator pears or laurel peaches, a semi-tropical fruit which grew into a nationwide industry. Alfalfa. Five to six cuttings of the rich fodder annually, creating a vast dairy and dairy products industry, exceeded in volume by only one other state. Sheep raising has become a big time industry too, with power for shearing and processing. California is third in the nation in wool production. And here in Petaluma, known as the world's egg basket, the surrounding hillsides echo with the cackle of chickens, producing a billion, eight million eggs per year, making California second in the nation. Great plants of incubators hum with low cost hydroelectric power turning out chicks on assembly lines at the rate of 20 million every 12 months. Petaluma also manufactures incubators for the nation. An incubator is the word for the great flat magic acres of the irrigated Imperial, San Joaquin and Salinas Valleys, where grow the fabulous crops of tomatoes, lettuce, celery, carrots, Honeydew, watermelons, cantaloupe, everything to supply more than half the melon and vegetable needs of the entire nation. Mass production that would be impossible without mechanization. Powered by oil products for a fabulous harvest and hydroelectric power for high speed processing. Not the wheat state that it was in bygone days. California still fills a large part of its own needs, using a great volume of its own petroleum products for the planting and reaping. Long staple cotton from the Palo Verde and San Joaquin Valleys, where each acre yields twice as much harvest as anywhere else in the world. For the planting and harvesting of thousands of acres of potatoes, gasoline-powered diggers here in Kern County, along with the power machinery, are unbelievably deft hands working with machines and man-made rain. And man-made ice. Hydroelectric power to manufacture frost. The ice making it possible to ship the fruits and vegetables of California in refrigerated freights. Pulled eastward over mountains and deserts by oil-burning locomotives. Power for the diesel-driven fishing fleets. From California offshore waters, now come the greatest catches of the world's most valuable fish, the fighting tuna, a harvest reaped for the billion-dollar cannery industries at San Pedro and San Diego. Fisherman's luck. California is first among all the states in fishing resources and number one in commercial output. An endless stream from the blue waters of the Pacific, fresh food for the nation, caught by power and preserved by power. Great clawed crabs are trapped in deep northern waters and shipped alive to markets in refrigerated trucks, planes and trains and simply boiled alive, as at the world-famous Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Mmm, good. A shellfish treat for the top of any gourmet's menu. Salmon for the canneries and the sport fishermen. 
Sardines are netted off the coast in the dark of the moon, processed by the ton in San Pedro, San Francisco, and Monterey canneries. Heads and tails clipped by electric knives, packed by machine in cans with natural oil, mustard, or tomato sauce to help satisfy the nation's demand for seafood. And the power of petroleum products to harvest the forests of ponderosa and sugar pines. The white and red fur that cover the mountain slopes for one fourth of the vast land area. Lightweight, portable power to bring this valuable timber to earth. Timber! Oil to fuel the boilers of locomotives that haul the logs to the mill ponds. Logs to be sawed into lumber for the manufacture of crates to carry thousands of train loads of fruits and vegetables to markets all over the world. And power to handle the gigantic redwood trees, almost unbelievable in size. This one containing enough lumber to build three large five-room homes. A giant is toppled, aimed precisely to save nearby trees. Forestry conservation to safeguard our valuable timber. Timber to be picked up again by oil-powered hoists. To be sawed in hydroelectric and steam-powered mills for the building of more factories and more homes. Today, each new dwelling can be fabricated and completely furnished with materials from California's earth and shaped in California factories. Multiple carving machines in a great furniture factory, carving a long row of identical parts at one time. Before there was power, furniture had to be imported. Now the furniture manufacturing industry of the state is one of the biggest of the nation. Power from mining. With the energy of petroleum and hydroelectric power, California's vast mineral resources have been made available to 20th century industry. The earth of the Golden State contains 58 commercial minerals, a wider variety than in any other state of the Union. Copper, zinc, and iron pyrites from the mines of Shasta and Trinity County, pulling out over one half million tons a year. From Inyo County, two and a half million pounds annually. Borax, the entire supply for the United States comes from the desert regions of Inyo, Kern, and San Bernardino County. One time as Colomanite, it came from Death Valley by 20 mule team wagons. But now, Razorite, a much higher grade borax ore, produces more per ton. And also from the dry Searles Lake in the desert, comes great quantities of sodium bicarbonate and many other mineral products, including, as a byproduct, more borax and quicksilver, or call it mercury. California's 54 mines lead the nation in output, producing nearly 70% of the national total. Unbelievable that from this red ore, called cinnabar, we can get silvery mercury for thermometers, barometers, switches, lamps, and mercurochrome. From the mines in the wild country near Bishop, high in the Sierras, for electric light bulbs, tungsten, and molybdenum from the same shafts located 12,000 feet above sea level. At sea level, the mineral-filled water of San Francisco Bay supplies the mother liquid for great salt works, which produce rich bromides, magnesia, and gypsum, $21 million worth per year. Gypsum, too, from Riverside County for California's booming building industry. Cement from mountains of limestone processed at Victorville in San Bernardino County and in the largest cement plant in the world at Permanente near San Francisco. Talc, or soapstone, from the desert mines near Death Valley for face powder, paints, filler for paper, soap, fire and electric switchboards. Clay and terracotta at Lincoln on top of great deposits of high-grade clay are huge pottery works, turning out beautiful facades for magnificent buildings. 
and the beautiful urns and tableware for which California is famous. Dry ice. From beneath the desert, east of the Salton Sea, comes carbon dioxide out of sand pockets on the bed of an ancient lake to be processed for modern refrigeration. California is the world's largest producer of diatomite, basic ingredient for many insulating and filtering materials. Open pit deposits at Lompoc in Santa Barbara County and in the Palos Verdes estates in Los Angeles County produce great quantities of wonderful purity. Diatoms are the fossilized remains of ancient sea algae. Looking like white stone, diatomite is so light it will float in water. Among its many uses is as a filtering agent for the clarification and purification of liquids. Used as a heat insulator, one side will remain cool while the other side is hot enough to light a cigarette. In gold output, California still leads the nation. With mining operations made possible by petroleum and hydroelectric power, huge chain bucket dredges make their own channels as they slowly inch through the gold-bearing land. And as they move, the monster machines wash the gravel for the precious metal. Costing hundreds of thousands of dollars, these mining goliaths search the central and northern river areas for the buried treasure. And hydraulic gold mining, too, made possible by the great water pressures built up by melting snows, mighty streams against mountains, ripping and tearing away at the bases and slopes of earthen and rocky masses, terrific power to bring down mountains, putting the gold-flecked earth into a muddy, watery solution from which the precious metal settles to the bottom into man-made ripples from which the gold is easily gathered. Gold is won also from the underground quartz mines of Grass Valley. Here, power has enabled the sinking of some of the deeper mining shafts of North America. From such mines come today's cheap supply of gold, millions of dollars worth. For heavy industry, iron. Power shovels scoop the rich ore from open pits of San Bernardino County and load it on diesel-powered trucks for the open hearth furnaces of Fontana, California's huge steel mill. Hydroelectric powered machines spinning out miles of basic steel products. Rolling mills smashing out the girders and supports for the building of the West. More great factories in the making to use the raw materials of the mines, the forests, and the fields to manufacture for every local need and export. Now, with these great sources of power, water, electricity, natural gas, and petroleum to put her fabulous natural resources to work. California is growing into one of the leading industrial giants of our nation, the 20th century state. First in airplane production, capital of the world in flying ship output, here are the enormous plants to keep California a leader in the coming air age. 
second only to Ohio in the manufacture of rubber tires, California is becoming a leader in the production of synthetic rubber goods and plastics, byproducts of our great oil refining industry. Oil refining, also second in the nation, powered by the abundant supply of low-cost hydroelectric energy, are the great catalytic crackers, big as ocean liners and taking as much time and money to build. Mechanical marbles turn out tremendous quantities of high-octane gas, diesel fuels, kerosene, lubricating oils, and many synthetic byproducts, conserving this great natural resource by turning every drop of crude to useful purpose. Cosmetics, using synthetics, native oils, and talcs. California delivers packaged glamour by the ton and earns millions of dollars for drugstores and beauty parlors all over the world. And more glamour. The motion picture industry of Hollywood and nearby communities. This fabulous industry employs 45,000 people with almost every imaginable trade skill. A leader in shipbuilding. On San Francisco Bay, one of the finest natural harbors in the world, magnificent trans-Pacific liners near completion. Ships soon to be carrying the passengers and goods of the West to all of the world. San Francisco. San Diego, a haven large enough for our entire Navy. Stockton, an inland port where ocean liners can load cargo produced on the river's edge. Los Angeles, the world's largest man-made harbor at San Pedro, built from mud flats and wasteland, with the power of petroleum and hydroelectric current. And her great airports are already the gateways to the world, west to the Orient and Australia, over the pole to all points on the globe. Planes from Buenos Aires can reach San Francisco in the same time it takes them to get to New York or Chicago. Petroleum power has also made California the motor aid Wide superhighways and transport lanes have been spread like ribbons along the coast, over the mountains, through the deserts and valleys, leading to every kind of outdoor pleasure. And a huge tourist industry, millions of year-round visitors who spend within California's borders over one half billion dollars annually. Because California's facilities for all year-round recreation cannot be excelled. Bathing in the blue Pacific, with sandy beaches stretching the length of the states. Warm water and clear skies. Snow fun in nearby mountains. Ice skating, sleighing, and the spectacular thrills of skiing in a dozen winter sport areas. world-famous resorts, Palm Springs, oasis on the edge of the desert at the foot of San Jacinto Mountain, a winter paradise of warm, dry days and cool desert nights. For lovers of nature and scenic grandeur, there are dozens of national and state parks forests, strikingly beautiful Yosemite Fall, the highest free-leaping waterfall in the world dropping a half a mile straight down the face of a solid rock mountain. And magnificent Vernal Falls, also in Yosemite Park, a mecca for sightseers. The famous Redwood Highway, the forests of giant sequoias, massive big trees, the world's largest and oldest living things. And wildlife aplenty. From bear to game birds, California has the greatest variety of game and fish reserves in the United States. Hundreds of mountain streams beckon to the fly fishermen. The clear, cold water from the melting snows abound with game fish of many varieties. The blue
blue waters of beautiful mountain lakes, the lure of fighting big trout, wonderful sport in glorious surroundings, and the reasonable limits set by a conservation-minded fish and game department assures good fishing for all time to come. And at lower altitudes, bass and other game fish the year round. State of contrasts, Mount Whitney, the highest point in the United States. And just 60 miles away is the lowest spot, desolate Death Valley. Vacation land of beautiful desert, crystal lakes, and magnificent mountains. And overall, a gentle climate and a friendly sun. California has the ingredients to give its people a helpful outdoor way of reckoning the year round. California is also becoming the cultural capital of the West, with inspiring churches of every faith and denomination. Fine modern schools and universities, from which graduate more Americans of every race, creed, and color each year than from the schools of any other state in the Union. And the crowning glory of California, the sparklers in the treasure chest, her cities with the singing Spanish names. Sacramento, capital of the state, where an alert department of natural resources is aware that if California is to continue as a land of plenty, its resources must be wisely administered, carefully developed, and wherever physically possible, conserved or reproduced. San Diego, Navy town. San Francisco, once a barren peninsula of rocky hills, now banking center of the West, maritime capital of the Pacific, city of the world's two greatest bridges, cable cars of the gay 90s. Metropolis with an international population including the largest settlement of Chinese outside of China. Los Angeles, from a small Pueblo in an arid basin to the nation's third most populous city, over two million people, almost within the span of a single lifetime. City of palm-lined streets and beautiful homes, center of the richest county in the United States, hub of leading industries, Los Angeles, one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world, is still growing by leaps and bounds. All of these great California cities, and the hundreds of towns and villages, tell the story of the natural resources that surround them. And all this, since the turn of the century. California, the up-to-date El Dorado, fashioned by mountain water, hydroelectric power, natural gas, 58 commercial minerals, and a vast petroleum industry. California is indeed the 20th century state, a monument to progress and to power.